Hey everyone, I just wanted to make a video response to the feedback and reaction to my videos that feature ChatGPT01 Mini and ChatGPT01 Preview, as well as the live stream that I did last night where I tasked ChatGPT01 Preview and Mini to effectively recreate some code that I had written for my PhD that I, that I spent you know, a good portion of the first year of my PhD doing. I wanted to make this video just to address a few questions that I see recurring on social media and on the comments section. And I also just want to say thank you to everyone who's tuned in and supported the videos over the past few days. It's just been really uh, surprising and uh, heartwarming, honestly, and I'm glad that I can play the role of a facilitator in increasing the discussion on artificial intelligence and its potential impact on our lives. So thank you again for tuning in and giving me your feedback. I've, I take it very seriously and use it to think of new content ideas. So the point of this video is I, again, wanted to address some recurring questions that have kept coming up in the discussion. So let me switch my screen here. Uh, first, I'll also say if you haven't seen the videos of me testing it um, with problems, and, and the live stream, I really recommend you do. Um, if you've only just seen the six and a half minute video, I think it can be easily taken out of context and I apologize, but I just wanted to get that moment because I thought it was a very special moment indeed. But I think these three videos better give it context because this again was sort of towards the midway point of a very long stream. And so the first point I want to address is the availability of my code. Was my code publicly available to ChatGPT before it started its training? And the answer is unequivocally yes. I completely forgot that I had a notebook that I had on my GitHub. You can see it's from four years ago. This was a very older, old version, I should say, of my code that I gave to a undergraduate student to use for their summer research project. So we had summer you know, research interns. Uh, one of them was gonna do a black hole mass measurement as part of their research project. And I wrote this notebook for them. It has a very old version of my code. This is kind of a, a very basic version, but uh, yes, this has been around uh, on the internet and this notebook kind of explains how, it's, how it can be used. So that's a fair point to people who bring it up. I'd also like to point out though, that not only was this available, but as I've mentioned in the, my paper, and this is the, the paper on the publisher's website, I mentioned here that my code is an adaptation of codes that have been written before. Those were written in IDL. Um, but also this code is, again, descended from other works, right? From Machado et al, 1997, Barth et al, 2001, Barth is my, was my advisor. And so thin disk dynamical modeling codes have been around since you know the late 1990s. And I think the better question that should be asked is why are astronomers reinventing the wheel every few years? That's another discussion for another day. But if you go and do a search of sort of thin disk modeling codes or tilted ring dynamical modeling codes, these things have been around. I mean, this is a popular one that was around in the mid 2000s, terrific. Um, Biberola was a more recent one. Um, there's KinMS Pi, which again is pretty, like KinMS was written by uh, Tim Davis and Tim Davis is a principal investigator of another research group that does the same kind of measurement as our group. I mean, his code's been around for, for years. Um, this code from um, Peter Tubin, who is a, a long um, time astronomer who's been doing these kinds of similar kinds of measurements, I should say, not exactly the same, but using the same kinds of geometries. These codes have been around for you know 20 years. So to say that ChatGPT had access to similar stuff, it's, it's true, it did. I mean, a lot of this stuff has been around. Mine specifically is not anything special in the sense, I mean, the data that gets input to it is special because we were using telescope data from a telescope that was uh, just constructed in the past 10 years. And so that's the new thing. But in terms of the physics and the, the code and what the code is doing, not super new for the past um, 30 years. And so I think people want to, you know, hearken to that and say, oh, you know, therefore it cheated, you know, it, it didn't, uh, it didn't do uh, a great job. And uh, I have the, the notebook here and I want to pull it up really quickly if I can. Um, oh boy, of course, of course, when you want to pull something up, it is not there. Okay. So here it is, but yes, yeah, so it wrote, um, this code right here. And I also want to say, I'm going to share this. I shared a copy of it 
in this GitHub repo right here, ChatGPT01 YouTube. It's on my GitHub repo. I'll put it in the description below for people who want to, to use it. Um, I'll also throw in the log of my chat with ChatGPT01 uh, as well in there. People who were watching my stream last night uh, might know that I couldn't share it because if the link got disabled because I got mad at the end and I, I said, you know, I was kind of mean to 01 at the end there, so it got disabled. So I'll throw the notebook and I'll throw this uh, in there as well. Okay, so people can access that. But uh, again, basically what I want to say is that this version that it wrote, um, the the version of the code that I was sharing last night, what I was showing on my stream, um, I'm sorry, I have so many tabs, was this one. And this is a version of my code that it's, you know, it has 1144 lines. Yeah, 1144 lines. This code actually is, a much more advanced, has way more features than the version that was around four years ago, the one that is in this notebook that I gave to the summer student. So yes, multiple versions of my code have existed over the years, like this is the old one. Um, you can still see parts of it in the, the sort of the last major version I used while I was in my PhD. And so there are some differences and the, the code that, that ChatGPT01 created is closer to the more archaic version in the sense that it really does kind of the bare bones minimum. And one thing I, I wanted to say is that I think it would be really interesting to take this code and see if it can be applied or, you know, can I find ways to make the codes that I have more efficient and, you know, less buggy because I'm sure there's a ton of bugs in my code. And I also want to take this time to, to say I'm not an expert in computer science or machine learning or artificial intelligence. I don't have a traditional AI background, computer science background. My bachelor's, master's, and PhD were all in physics. And anyone who's done a STEM degree in the hard sciences might know that scientists are typically not taught well how to code. I, I didn't learn how to code till I was around 19 or 20. Uh, and so how I created my version, right? How, how I created the version that you might see in these uh, notebooks here that I'm sharing on GitHub, those were literally created by reading papers by my advisor and Boisel, who is a former student of my advisor, reading the original Machetto paper, literally just reading these papers, writing down what they did and trying to recreate that. And another thing that people like to point out is that, oh, there's no way it took you nine, 10 months to to do this, like there's no way, like, that could have been done way quicker. But I'll show you, I actually have my research notebook that I kept on my iPad. So you can see the date entry here. The first entry in my notebook was in July, 2018. And it is not, there's not an entry every day, but you can see this is what I was spending a lot of my time doing. I was like, I was saying, I was reading those papers, I was trying to understand, you know, how they were you know, running the code and trying to you know understand the math so you can see i'm writing like python code out and trying to understand the data header format and trying to understand how do i you know implement it uh, you can see here i'm like sort of sketching out ideas uh you know talking about the array and stuff and this just goes on right like i'm looking at different documentations i was talking about lm fit yesterday as the main minimizer. So there's, you know, a screenshot I took of LM fit and just trying to understand how to use it. And uh, this is a recommendation for all grad students. Keep a good notebook of records like this. So when people doubt that it took you that long, you can point to your notebook and say, I, I did take this long look. Like I was thinking all this time on how to do it. And I wasn't actually writing the code. And maybe that's the big problem that I had, right? Is I wasn't um, actively typing code. I was reading, I was trying to understand, making sure I was implementing it correctly. And I don't have the exact date when everything went right for me, but if you go to this slideshow that um, I, I was giving to my group when I was a grad student, I, could, I can only find these two presentations, one from 2018, like November 2018. You can see I'm telling my group back then, hey, this is how far I've gotten with my code. Like this is what I'm trying to do. You can see you know, writing the code out and saying, that's what I've tried and it's not working. And then if you get to the May 31st, 2019 post, this is, I think the first time I was revealing to everyone that I actually 
uh, got results that were comparable to my predecessor, Ben Boisel. So um, I was actually testing his uh, measurement. He made a black hole mass measurement in this galaxy with his, his own thin disk dynamical modeling code. Uh, his code is in IDL, not in Python. So I didn't have access to it. Again, this goes into the whole why are why are astronomers completely reinventing the wheel? Again, I'd love to give you a great answer, um, but I don't know. I think it goes into a lot of like, I don't know, holding your code tight to your chest and not having practices with like GitHub and code management and version control and stuff like that. And scientists can be pretty, I don't know, particular with how they want to share their stuff, which is again, a completely different discussion. But you can see here, this is the first time my code seems to be getting comparable results to Ben's. And so if we take, you know, May 31st, 2019, uh, around this time, and we, uh, you know, start at the beginning of my research notebook in July of 2018, if we just do that calculation, right, that is about 319 days or about 10 months, 15 days. Again, May 31st might be a little bit late. Obviously, I got the results. So maybe we'll say even May 1st if we want to be generous. But if I go back into my notebook, right, if I go back to the part in the notebook where, um, you know, I'm talking about what's happening. I, I don't have like a moment where I'm like, yes, I did it. Like, I'm amazing. You know, the, the notebook can be kind of sparse at times. I don't have like great... Um, entries every day but you can see here this is what i was doing like this is the notebook i'm going to zoom out a bit so people can see a little bit more um and people were like saying oh there's no way you spent that long i did i was thinking about it and um again you know everyone has a different way of doing their phd if i had access to someone else's code that i could have reference to i'm pretty sure i could have done my code much more quickly than 10 months um, I was also going through a lot of personal challenges at the time as well. I had some physical problems and I had to get surgery, was on crutches for months. It was not good. So all those things combined, it's probably why it took me closer to like a year rather than like half a year or a quarter of a year to get this code done. But um, nevertheless, this is just to prove my point that I was not joking when I said this thing took me uh, nine, 10 months. I was actively reading papers, trying to create my own code from the papers themselves. So uh, sorry if I went on about that. I just thought it was worth uh, sharing. And also I just like looking at my notebook. It's just kind of cool to see like the culmination of all your work when you had all these ideas of how things should go and it came to be. And, you know, I created a code that while buggy and maybe not the most elegant ran and ultimately helped me deliver uh, some quality measurements that I could get a PhD out of. So, yeah, um, those are the main things that I wanted to address in terms of um, codes and, and stuff of that nature. I just want to see if I, I'm not, not forgetting anything. But I think that's it in terms of sharing um, my code and uh, just the availability of other codes online. But I also want to talk about AGI. And I want to talk about what I saw last night because I don't want the narrative to be shared incorrectly. And I'm sorry if I if I am contributing to that problem because I'm I am excited, but I want to be firm and clear that I don't believe I saw AGI last night, despite the reaction you saw on my face. I don't think that was AGI. And people are saying, Oh, you don't understand how these things work. Like why are you impressed? that that thing worked. I mean, it probably just found your code base or whatever and just plagiarized it. And to that I say, and if it did, that's still way faster than I could have done it, right? Like, I don't wanna claim that AI has gotten to the point where it can make novel breakthrough discoveries. That's not what I'm saying at all. And that's not what I was trying to demonstrate when I was going through these videos I was creating. I'm not trying to show that it can think of a new idea and it can uh, you know, solve unsolved problems. These are all solved problems, right? Like I wrote the code. These are, these are homework problems, textbook problems that have a known answer. And I wanted to see, can it do that? But I don't think because it can do that, that it's AGI, right? I don't think it has that next ability yet. I mean, I, I, I wanna hold my breath before I say anything, but I think I, I wanna be very, very clear that 
AG, uh, AGI is not here yet. ChatGPT01, Preview, Mini, not AGI yet. Um, I do think, as you saw in the videos last night, that it can be a really great research assistant. I mean, if I could have had access to this code, uh, let me back here, this code, the code that it wrote, that I asked it to write based on my description of the paper, right? Giving it my paper description. If I had this code in 2018, July 2018, I would never have had to go through all this. I mean, it was probably still a good exercise because now I really understood what the code was actually doing. And I think that is the danger, right? When we start to think about pushing ahead and maybe not stopping and thinking, what is actually going on here? Is it actually getting these things right? I mean, the only reason I'm able to like make these suggestions to the code and, and think of why the code might be failing is because I spent these nine, 10 months, you know, writing these out, writing, uh, reading these papers and, and, um, really thinking deeply about it. And I think that was the benefit of doing a PhD, right? It's to, to help you solve problems, help you think better. And uh, I don't think that can be fully replaced yet, but what can be replaced is maybe just the tediousness and the, the small little details of, you know, how do I code this? How do I, you know, structure this array in this way and do those kinds of things. And so one of the last things I want to talk about is that I really want to try and use ChatGPT 01 mini and the, the full version when it's out. I really like to, to try and play with the code it gave me here. And again, this is going to be shared with you all in a GitHub repository. I want to take this and I really want to see if I can do maybe some independent research with the with it as my sort of sidekick, as my assistant, because obviously I've published papers before on this topic and my PhD, while I'm happy I did it, left some things to be desired. Like there were some unsolved problems I didn't get to and I feel a little bit bad about and wish I could get to. And maybe because of ChatGPT-01, I might be able to do that. I might be able to with the limited amount of time that I have because I, I have a day job. I, I don't have my whole time to dedicate to astrophysics research anymore. For those of you who don't know, I'm not a, I'm not working in astrophysics anymore. Um, that would be great. So I hope, I know I've been going on, it's been like 17 minutes and uh, this is long, but I really wanted to get uh, the message out and set the record straight and to try and quell a lot of the maybe overblowing of the reaction before it gets too out of hand, because I, I don't want to be a, uh, a messenger of misinform misinformation, right? I want to, I want to put content out that I think is cool and interesting and surprising, but is rooted fundamentally in reality and in truth. And, uh, you know, I'm not always going to get it right. Like I said, I'm not an AI researcher. And so if some of my reactions are, 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 are signs that give me away as a novice, then it's because I am, I'm still learning AI as much as, as the next person. I mean, I've just started doing ML stuff for my job and I've only started learning ML for the past, you know, two years. So I'm still new to this stuff. So I really appreciate your patience with me throughout all of this. And I hope you'll continue watching my videos. I have some interesting ones planned in terms of how to, um, you know, incorporate AI and this new chat, new chat GBT model. So uh, with that, I think that's it. I've talked long enough, but I appreciate you sticking around to watch this and I hope to see you next time.